Okay, so infinite limit is when you have um, a function as it approaches to um, a number, the value of the function grows big and big. Infinite is not a number, it just is a trend. It just, it's a state in which when you're getting closer to that point, the values of function goes higher and higher, or it goes down dip into the negatives. In terms of graphs, what this, oops, um, what this means is that, when you have infinite limit, as you're approaching to a point A from either right or left, the values of function gets increased and increases, increases as you get closer and closer, or it could go down very negative and negative. And well, there again, as always, there are um, precise definitions of these ones, but we won't cover those ones. Uh, what we will do quickly here is that I remind you that we already saw a case where we get either infinity, well, infinite limit. And that was when we have a rational function. Uh, uh, that limit of numerator exists and it is not equal to zero and limit of the denominator as X approaches to A is zero. <clears throat> and while when we are trying to find F of X over GX, we were specifically, there are cases that this won't won't work nicely, but there, what we are interested in is rational functions or, or just this nice functions that we have been working with, a uh, quotient of these ones. In this case, we have infinite limit. It, well, particularly this is, this is the rational function. We could have crazy functions that will, will, will give us very headache. But in the case of rational functions, this is definitely the good, um, good case that we will see uh, here and there. But how do we know, how do we determine if the infinite limit is plus infinity or negative infinity is the limit. This is basically finding out the sign of the values. So if, if you see limit of the numerator is positive, we're assuming that it is, exists, it's positive, then we have to look into the function. This really depends how GX approaches to zero as X goes to A. Yes. And this really means that does it approach to zero from negative values or positive values. So I will just write it like this, limit of GX is zero plus. By that, we mean the values of the denominator um, gets closer to zero from negative side. Because to zero, we can get to the zero either from below or from above when it comes to the values of the function. So if it gets from the negative side, this is positive. This is 
positive. This is positive. The limit will be uh, plus infinity. Just multiply the signs. If the limit of gx is zero minus by, the, oh, sorry, I did write negative, but I wrote positive. Okay, this is positive side. And this is the values of G, G gets closer from to zero to from the negative side. Then this is positive. And then this is positive. This is negative. You multiply, you get negative side. It means that you have to do a little bit more work to be able precisely find if the limit is plus infinity or negative infinity. And uh, while well, similarly, uh, this will work when f of x, the limit of f of x is negative. So you basically find that, see the limit of numerator. Is it positive or negative? Now, the second thing is the determine if the limit, we're getting closer to zero in the denominator using positive numbers or negative numbers. And then do, you multiply the signs of the numerator and that uh, values which are getting closer to zero. And then that will give you the sign for infinity. Before I go to do examples, is there any questions, any comments here? Are we recording? Yes, we are. Okay, so I will start an example. Okay, here, well, quotients. Always you start like this, limit of the denominator. Limit of x score minus seven, x plus 10, as x approaches to two. Since this is polynomial, polys are continuous. That means that I can just evaluate that. That will give me uh, the value of the limit. And no surprise, this is zero, yes? Then I go find limit of the numerator, x squared minus three x plus one as x goes to two. This is again, polynomials are continuous. So that means that two squared minus three times two plus one, which is the value of the function is equal to the limit. And in this case, four, minus six plus one is negative one, yes? Now, I we know that the limit of uh, this guy, x score minus three x plus one over x score minus seven x plus 10 is an infinite limit. There is no other case here, especially when you're working with the rational function. This is going to be in an infinite limit. But is it positive or negative? Well, I know already that the limit of the numerator is a negative number. Now I have to determine what happens to the function, uh, this guy here, when we get closer to, uh, to two. Well, in other words, I am interested in knowing the sign of the values of this function around two. So find the sign table then. Sign table for the denominator. Well, you know how to work with this. So you set it equal to zero. Uh, this is easy. Um, polynomial quadratic polynomial, two numbers adding to negative seven, multiplying to 10 minus five minus two. From that, x minus five is zero. That means that x must be five. x minus two is zero and x is equal to two. So there are two values at which my function, x squared minus seven, x plus 10 will be zero at two, at five. Now, well, you do the tricks you know, plug in sample point, or this is quadratic, you can do the work, 
Well, at the end, you will find this thing. What does this say? You see, these are values for x. As we get closer to x, to two from the right-hand side, value of the function is positive. So for when x is bigger than two and approaching to two, The function, let, let's call this guy g of x. Uh, g of x is going to be negative. So in other words, in our wording, the strange uh, formulation, zero plus is not a, a, a right notation. We have a meaning for that. And by that, we mean that, okay, when x goes to two from the right-hand side, this will be zero, but a little bit, uh, sorry. Uh, but we will get a pro, we get closer to zero by using negative values. Similarly, if we get to two from the left, um, this guy, the limit is zero, but we will get closer to that from the positive side. So I, I want to just know that the sign. So now I can say that, okay, limit of this guy, what was that? X squared minus three X plus one over X squared minus seven X plus 10 as X approaches to two from the right. This is negative one over zero, but coming from the negative numbers, getting closer from the negative numbers. Negative times negative, this will be plus infinity. Limit of x, limit of this function, as x approaches to two from the left, the numerator will be negative one. The denominator, we're getting closer to zero but we are using positive values. So zero plus, we have a meaning for that. Outside this class, it may not have any meaning, zero plus, what, the, what does that mean? But here now you have negative times positive. The, we are, the function will grow big and big negative as we get closer to two from the left. That's, that's it. You can draw the, the sketch, the graph somehow, because now you know closer to two, what will happen to the function. As we get closer to two from the right, it will go to plus infinity. I don't know what will happen before, but closer to two, it will just blow up like this. And when, when we approach to two from the left, it will go down like that. Yes, Leo. Yes, please. Um, so really quickly, the what, the sign that determines if it's um, negative or positive infinity is like the sign that's going, um, that's in regard to the direction or the sign of the actual number itself? Uh, sorry, are you talking about the limits or are you talking about the, the graph? Which one? Oh. Um, the limit, like how you determined it was negative. Oh, I see. You see, the limit of numerator is negative one. It has a next sign there, but limit of denominator is zero. It doesn't have any sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's why we have to study it a little bit deeper, meaning that, okay, we are getting closer to zero, but how are we getting closer to zero? Are we using negative numbers to get closer to zero or positive numbers to get closer to zero? Okay, so you, you're more that, so looking at the direction. Yes, so that, that's why I am using this strange notation in quotation, zero minus. That means that we are getting closer to zero, but to get closer to zero, we are using negative numbers. Okay, so what if you had a scenario where like, um, let's say the number at the denominator 
or like the limit of the number of denominator or oh wait never mind you're always going to have a zero on the denominator when you have yeah zero. yes that okay. that that's the case that we are going to have infinity yes okay okay uh, probably how, yes please um do we like how do we determine if the graph is approaching the x axis from above or below when it's uh, reaching infi positive infinity or negative. Oh, infinity. this is positive infinity. Always get, getting close to positive infinity means that it just grows upward, just goes high and high. <coughs> Going to negative infinity means that it goes down and down. But right. okay. we, are, we are not getting close. We are not, we cannot evaluate this function at two. We are oh. just considering when we get closer to this number. I was thinking of uh, horizontal asymptote, actually. Um, oh, that's, that yeah, that's different. So yeah. that's called, okay. that's called limit at infinity. Okay. This is infinite limit. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I have another example. I will give this one for you to do it yourself in your time. Uh, Fabiha, do you still have a question or you forgot to lower your hand? So pre, you can take a screenshot of this one uh, for you to do it. Very similar. You have to determine the sign and then work and figure out uh, what is that uh, positive or negative infinity. I will do another one, which is this one. Okay. So remember that uh, when, when we have caution, we right away go ahead and try to see if, I, if we are allowed to use the quotient law, it means that we have to first check the limit of the denominator. Cosine is continuous. It means that the limit and the value of the function is the same. Minus one is there, that's limit law. That means that cosine of zero is one, one minus one is zero. Okay, we are in trouble, we cannot use quotient law. Now we have to go ahead and use the limit, find the limit of the denominator, numerator. So secant, secant is nothing but one over cosine x as x approaches to zero. And uh, one over co cosine x, this I can apply quotient law and I get one over cosine zero, one over one, which is one. I found the limit of numerator. I found the limit of the denominator. Limit of numerator is one. Limit of the denominator is zero. So we definitely know that limit of this guy is an infinite limit. Yeah. But is it positive infinity, negative infinity, or depending on from which side we are approaching zero, we will get like different side, uh, different side. So for that, I just simply need to do, uh, try to find, so we need to, we need to determine from which side cosine x minus one approaches to zero as x goes to zero. That's our task to do. Well, in the case of polynomials, at least you know to do the sign table, yes? Um, in general, you can do the sign table, but finding sign table is not always easy. Here, I will use a fact, very well-known fact. Sine and cosine are never bigger than one, and never less than negative one. So cosine of x is always less than one, uh, less than one, well, bigger than negative one as well. So this means that I can bring this one to the other side. So cosine of x minus one is always negative. Well, you can, you can see that in the graph of cosine actually, because cosine, the graph is something like this, and while this is the value one, cosine is always below one. It means that cosine x minus one is going to be negative. Not only around zero, it is negative. 
it's always negative. So it means that cosine of x minus one always uh, it gets negative values. Well, when it get approaching to zero, it will be using negative numbers. So in other words, as a result of that limit of cosine x minus one as x approaches to zero is zero minus approaching to zero by using negative numbers. Now, the limit of secant x over cosine x minus one as x approaches to zero, the limit of numerator is one, limit of the denominator is zero negative, my meaning that getting closer to zero from the negative side, positive times negative, this is going to be negative. In other words, well, by the way, this is not, oh, yeah, this is cosine, but the function is not defined at, at, at zero. If you want to look at the graph of this function, uh, well, it, it will need some work to do for the other side, but when we get closer to zero from both sides, the function, the values of function plunges down, down to negative infinity, something like that. Any questions, any comments? Yes, we know, yes, please. Sorry, really quickly, I know um, the rule where you wrote down um, cos x is, um, or cos x negative one always gets negative values. And then that's just a rule that we would, or that we were, um, I guess, explained uh, earlier in the videos. Uh, well, okay. We have been working with sine and cosine. And while you may know the main values, different things, but uh, you're now expected to know a little bit more. For example, cosine, based on the works that we have done, cosine and sine, just look at the graph of these guys. These two guys are always between one and negative one, oscillating between these two. Yes. And that's just writing it in mathematical format. Mm -hmm. And okay. yes, you're supposed to know it. If you're, if you're looking for that, yes, you're supposed to know it from this point on, after what we, we, we covered for the sine and cosine. And then with um, sine x minus one, then it would be like a different um, a scenario. Oh, well, in this, uh, well, sine x minus one is also going to be negative. Okay, thank you. Uh, Adam, yes, please. Hello, Professor. I just wanted to ask, can you still use um, limit x to zero from right and limit x to zero from left here? Um, I didn't need to use it uh, here because I noticed that's always going to be negative. If we are yeah. approaching to zero, in either case, you get closer, I uh, get to, uh, to, to, to zero using negative numbers. That's why I don't need to separate. In the previous example, however, I noticed that when I approach to two from the right, it uses different sign of values than when I approach to a two from the left. That's why yeah. I had to separate those cases. But here, they are the same thing. I have I have proven, I have shown very general, uh, general thing there. But could you still use it? You, you can do to. it, yes, but it would just give you more, more work more yeah. um, not paid work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you, Professor. Okay, you're very welcome. Please lower your hand if you don't have questions so that I can keep track of the questions. Um, where, vertical asymptote, well, now this is knowing the, the, the infinite limit, uh, now we can define what is called a vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is a line. It's vertical line as, as it comes from the name. The vertical line, remember the equation for the vertical line uh, is x equal to a number. The a vertical line um, 
x equal to a is called a vertical asymptote if if when we find limit of the function as x approaches to a if this is plus infinity or minus infinity or i don't need to have the whole limit even if we have one sided limits one of these guys is plus infinity or minus infinity only one of these guys needs to happen for us to say that this guy x equal to a is a vertical asymptote. Only one of these, even we may have a case that on one side the limit exists, the other side, the limit is infinity, either plus infinity or minus infinity, that case we say that this guy is uh, infinite. Uh, this guy is a vertical asymptote. In the case of rational functions, again, since we are, uh, we are, we have been working with rational functions in the case of rational functions, um, to find, um, to find the, the, the vertical asymptotes, we have to start finding cases that gives us infinite limit. Infinite limit in the rational functions happen only if the limit of the denominator is zero. So the zeros of the denominator are candidates. They're only candidates, not always the vertical asymptote. The zeros of the denominator are candidates. Then we have to find limits of the rational function as x approaches to a for all a's for all zeros a of the denominator. So I have been I have been seen I have been seen that students are when they are asked to find the um, the, the the vertical asymptotes of a rational function they only do this part. Well, they say that, okay zeros of denominator done. These are vertical asymptotes. That's wrong. You have not done enough job and your answer might be wrong. You have to start with them. They, these are only just the candidates. We know that if we have vertical asymptote, that must be zero of the denominator, but not all zeros of denominators are going to give us a, a vertical asymptote. That's why you have to do this other step. It's not extra, it is just the work. This part is the work you need to do. Let me show you in some example, you'll notice that, that uh, what, can, what could happen. So I have this function, it's already simplified just for us to have simpler uh, calculations. Uh, so I know, so oh, this is rational function, that's obvious. And uh, while well, the candidates for vertical asymptotes are zeros of denominator. Means that I have to find this guy. For, from this thing, we see that, okay, X could be equal to zero. That means that X equal to negative one is just a candidate. X equal to X minus one being equal to zero, it means that X equal to one. It's another candidate. And X minus two equal to plus two equal to zero, it means that X equal to negative two is another candidate. 
we have three candidates. We are not done. We have to compute the limits. So I go ahead and try to do the limits one by one. Limit of the function. Let me, oh yeah, this is function f of x. As x goes to negative. What you see here is that, oh, this guy, the limit of numerator as x goes to zero, this will make denominator zero. This will uh, be, numerator will be just one number, yes? So it will be, let me just see. If I plug in limit of negative one in the numerator, this is negative one, negative two, a one squared, that is just two. So the limit of this guy is two. And limit of the denominator, obviously it is zero because it is going to be of this form. This is um, zero times negative two times one to the power three, which is zero. So I have two over zero, and well, I definitely have infinite limit. Well, to find very precisely where this will be positive, where this will be negative, you have to use the sign table for the denominator. Yes, for the sign table in the denominator, I have negative two or negative one and then one. This is x plus one, x minus one x plus two to the power three. I'm doing, I'm, I'm trying to show you as much as I can. And then, well, in this case, what will happen that it will alternate. The sign as you pass a zero, it will change. Not always, this, this is not true always. You have to be very careful. Well, what does this mean? This means that when we approach to negative well, from the right, x goes to negative one from the right, the function is positive. So we are getting numerator is two, which is well, always positive number. The denominator, we are getting closer to zero from the uh, using negative numbers. So positive, this is negative infinity. So limit of f of x as x approaches to negative one minus, this will be, two over zero plus that will be positive. And this, while well, the result is this, x equal to one, yes, is a vertical asymptote. Yes, it was one of the candidates, but that doesn't finish the job. I have to do a little bit of more, more work. And in this case, I had to do all these steps to make sure that uh, the at least one of the limits is plus or minus infinity as we approach a two negative one. Uh, yes, William, please. Uh, uh, there are a few questions like this on the assignment where you uh, you have to show what the, the vertical asymptotes for some functions are. Is it necessary to show like with, with a sign table um, where the limit goes or just- I, it, I, it, I want to see something either like that or like that from you. So, so you wanna have it, um, I, I, you couldn't just stop two, two, three lines above that and just say that it's an infinite limit. This because... is not enough because you haven't told me yet where the limit is positive infinity, negative infinity, consider that I'm going to sketch this thing. But my definition just says that one of these limits must be plus or minus infinity. You haven't given me precisely which limit is positive infinity or negative infinity. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so in this case, yes, the candidate turns out to be the uh, one of the vertical asymptote. How about X? Uh, when x approaches to one. So limit of the denominator. Well, I won't write the details here, but you can see this is zero as x approaches to one. Limit of the numerator.
is um, is also zero. It is more interesting case because now that we are getting closer to zero, in the first step, I don't find the limit. What I found is, um, is that this is zero over zero in determinate form. And remember what we did for the indeterminate form zero over zero? Factor it, it's already factored, cancel it. So I will cancel this while well, there are one up there, one down there, as X approaches to one, then this will give me limit of X, X plus two squared, X plus one, X plus two to the power three as X goes to one. And that will give me, this is just one, uh, nine over two times uh, 27, this is 54. Oh, we can simplify. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to bother that. But the point now is that the limit is not infinite. So the result is that x equal to one is not a vertical asymptote. It was a candidate, but it, it didn't give us infinite limit. So it's not a, a, a vertical asymptote. Probably highest, please. Um, could you not have factored out x plus two to the power two out of the numerator? Yes, I can. Power yes, power. I can. That's that's true. Uh, oh, from the beginning, no, I cannot. No, from I meant the, like from the numerator and the denominator. So you just say cancel these two, for example, and then do these two. Or are you talking about the limit process? Yeah, I'm talking about the limit. Okay, yeah, that one you cannot do because the function, if you cancel, you may change the domain of the function. For example, C, x, x squared over x is not as a function, is not equal to x. Because this guy, domain of this guy is everything but not zero, I cannot plug in zero. The domain of this other one is the whole real life. As a function, those are not the same. But in the process of canceling, you can cancel. There's only one thing that I am supposed to cancel X minus A. Yes, which is the vanishing factor. In this case, it's X minus one. Yes, you can cancel, but that will give you at the end uh, the same number, which would be yeah. what? One over six? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, there was another question as well. Yes, Alexandra, yes, please. I was just gonna ask, um, when you had uh, the candidate of X, equals one yeah um even though it wasn't a vertical asymptote it would be like a whole right yes in terms of the graph that's a very good question in terms of graph it says that okay so as we get closer to one the graph of the function will get closer to one over six okay i don't know what is the exact format but i'm just sketching something yes the important thing is that one is not in the domain of uh, this function so it show it will show itself as a hollow um, uh, point on the ground and you write this yes. Uh, as for x equal to negative one we have negative two we have to find the limit of negative two and uh, you will see that, oh, this is again zero over zero. I can cancel, so it will give us uh, well, I cancel, only one of them will remain there. 
And this you have to continue. I will leave it for you. And you, you need to show that, uh, well, this guy at negative two will give us infinite length. So, um, either plus or minus infinity, plus infinity. So as a result of that, since I have shown the enough work here, I'll just pass it on for this. X equal to negative two is a vertical. That's it. And the work will be very similar to this one. Like after you cancel it, it will go the same. Okay, so that this example, I like it because it just shows that different cases can happen. The denominator, uh, zero of the denominator of rational function can be a, a, a vertical asymptote. It may not be a, a vertical asymptote. It can be, but after a little bit longer work, after resolving indeterminate zero or zero case, and then getting infinite. Yes, we know yes, please. Sorry, did you mean to write um, for the first, when you, were, when you were looking at x equals negative one, at the bottom you wrote x equals one as the vertical asymptote, are we- Oh, I did write the wrong, you're right. I did mean to write negative one. I get so excited when I, when I do these kind of works. And then, okay. then yeah, you're right. It, so only x equal to negative two and x equal to negative one are the vertical asymptotes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, example two. Oh, this is a nice example. Um, well, this is not rational function anymore because it's just um, sum of ln, obviously not rational function, plus a rational function. Here, what you should remember, taking into my into account is that while well, I'm looking for points A, which may give me infinite limit. So then go and try to find all the possible things. One is when X, when you have denominator here, X minus, so candidate for vertical asymptotes. So the denominator, one part of the function is rational function. So I will take it and just take the candidates from there. So X minus one can, if it is zero, X equal to one is a candidate. How about ln itself? This is, I am assuming now, you know ln function enough to be able to see that ln function the domain of law function is first of all positive numbers. And as we go to zero, closer to zero, the function goes down like that. In other words, we know that limit of lawn as X goes to zero plus it's only defined on positive values. This is negative infinity. Uh, well, that's another candidate. These are two candidates. Now we have to check both of them. Limit of function as x goes to a one. This is limit of ln x plus limit of x over x minus one as x goes to one. This is nothing but ln one as x goes to one. And here I have to work a little bit, but the work as x goes to one as x goes to one. So oh, there's no x1. Ln of one is zero, and this would just give me x minus one as x goes to one. From here, well, you see there is a one over zero, so this is infinite limit. I know these ones, but I'll go do a little bit more work. Limit of x going to one from the right side, this will give me one over uh, zero, well, from left side, I wrote first, uh, from left side, this will be negative. So this is negative infinity. And that's enough for me. Uh, I'm just completing this uh, to show that one over zero plus this will be plus infinity. So yes, X equal to one is a vertical asymptote. 
Uh, how about x equal to zero? Well, I will do the similar kind of work. Uh, I will try to find limit of the function as x goes to zero. Well, this will give me limit of ln x as x goes to zero. Well, I have I know that I can approach to zero only from the right hand side because ln is defined for positive numbers plus ln of uh, x over x minus one as x goes to zero. In this case, the second one, we can apply quotient law and I can get uh, zero over zero minus one. And this is limit of ln x as x goes to zero plus. Now, while well, zero over negative one is zero, I have limit of ln x as x approaches to zero plus. And that is negative. As a result of that, x equal to zero is a vertical asymptote. This finishes the story of vertical asymptotes. Um, is there any questions, any, any comments for us? Okay, um, now we have a uh, limit at infinity. I'm done with the timing. Just- um, uh, Sir, sorry, could you go back to the previous page for a second? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, sorry, are you done? You good? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, let us let us keep the limit at infinity for the next uh, next session because the time is up. Um, but just know that uh, while well, limit at infinity is different than infinite limit. Yes, one lim infinite limit is that the values of function goes bigger and bigger as we approach to a number. Limit at infinity is that as we go in the x-axis to infinite or minus infinity, the values of function get closer to it. So that's that's the difference. Uh, I, I will start next week, next uh, session, which is Thursday. Uh, on this time, we will try to do the examples on, on uh, limit at infinity and horizontal asymptote. Okay, so this is the end of this tutorial. Um, if you have questions, please stay and you can ask the questions. Uh, if not, thank you for coming and see you all back on Thursday session.